you're listening to Corb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. Forgive me, Sharan, if this sounds like a name of a Thai dish, but I keep hearing Tam Sam Som a lot these days. I, I understand that neither you nor our listeners would mistake this for a Thai dish name because all of you guys are intelligent enough and clued in enough to know these are some of the terms which are regularly used now in the startup world, made very, very famous by this show called Shark Tank. Absolutely. I just thought that for today's episode, given some amount of work that you do with uh, some of the businesses who are either starting up or they are trying to change their course, I will try to quiz you on what these terms mean, how should, you, how should one be using them, uh, what are the things to be wary of and how do you use them carefully and then possibly demonstrate some examples so that our listeners are able to clearly understand what does Tam Sam Som mean. I can definitely try answering them because every time, depending on who I talk to, the definition of each of these keep varying. So let's try and uh, give it as definitive an example and possibly even bust a few myths about these numbers at all. Let's do that. So, okay, let's start with the first one, which is possibly one of the ones which, is, which was quoted fairly widely on uh, Shark Tank. And I think it was defined also by one of the sharks. What is TAM? TAM is nothing but your total addressable market. It's pretty much the total market demand for a product or service in terms of revenue. And that, say, if you had 100% of the market, what would your revenue be? And that is what is popularly defined as your TAM. And... It's largely used, say, to gauge the potential growth in a business and the category it's operating in. And it's, it's, it's a fairly straightforward calculation, actually, which talks about multiplying the number of potential customers by the number of occasions and the cost per occasion or the revenue per occasion. That's a pretty straightforward calculation of what a TAM would be. Okay, so potential customers, number of potential customers into number of occasions into num- revenue per occasion. That's pretty much your 100% market share, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what TAM really is. That's what pretty much it is. But it ends up being used for very, very different means. And TAM is, like you said, from, because of Shark Tank, almost becomes a, a entry yes or no question for a lot of the entrepreneurs and investors. Okay, and uh, would you say that TAM is a measure of uh, whether the entrepreneur is thinking big or not? Or is it a measure of whether you are entering a lucrative enough market or not? I'd say it's more an information table to say how big can your potential be. Okay, It is one of the indicators. In fact, yeah, it's one of the indicators for how big your business can be but not the only indicator. Okay, fair. When you say it is not the only indicator, just elaborate a bit more. Why is TAM now not the only number that an investor or some of us should look at? See, I've seen conversations between investors and entrepreneurs and even entrepreneurs just deciding on whether to start up or not start up by just looking at a TAM calculation. Now, See, a TAM indicates a growth potential for a business, yes. But a TAM doesn't tell you if that business size is waiting for you to come and capture it. Like, invariably, in 90% of the cases, even 95% of the cases, a large TAM also means a large number of competition. People are already fighting for that large space, large opportunity. The larger the opportunity, more visible it is. and Therefore, there are more people fighting for it. However, on the downside, what happens is when you say, if it's not a large enough TAM, I am not going to invest or I'm not going to enter this business, you are at a risk of letting go of opportunities, especially in the niches. 
a niche business could be highly profitable and with very little competition most of the time. And a lot of businesses that start in the niche end up expanding into far broader players over time. So this is a, a one of the metric to say how big you can be, but it doesn't define how big you can be. You need to take it with a whole bag of salt and have your business brand vision straight before you let this de- make uh, become your defining decision factor. Okay, fair. And then uh, basis what you're, you what you were just saying, because you're trying to define your potential consumers. So that also makes it sound as if if your potential consumers change, time will also change. Of course, it does. Time is definitely not a fixed number. And that is another reason why it can't be your only metric because it's, it really depends on how you slice the pie. And that's how you get your, you get to look at TAM very differently. Depending on the category you're operating, the life stage of the category, your TAM can shrink or expand. For example, electric vehicle chargers, they would have formally been defined by the number of electric cars in India. Today, the number of electric cars are only so much, so much more that the TAM for electric charging stations has gone up. Especially in evolving new technology categories, your TAM is always evolving. It's not constant. It's in fact, in most cases, it's rising. But in some cases, it can also be dropping. Like in the case of, say, tech-impacted books, bookstores rather. So... Ebooks might not have affected reading to that much of an extent. Say, probably in my estimate, is about 20% of physical book readers might have adopted to e-readers. But online book buying has actually killed physical bookstores to a large extent. So the TAM of bookstores has gone, gone down. So a TAM, depending on the industry, depending on how the category is evolving, also constantly moves. And these are tectonic shifts. And these, one, aren't easily accounted for. And these shouldn't necessarily be your decision factors at all. Okay. So just uh, a clarificatory question, because you said Mm. that, you know, because of online marketplaces, a lot of people might have started buying books online. So therefore, just from a potential customer point of view, TAM for a bookstore or a physical book would still remain the same. However, the realization of TAM would have gone down because now you have competition from online bookstores, right? I'm talking about TAM as bookstores. Let's say you are a software selling bookstore, then your TAM would have gone down. Now, your TAM would remain the same if you were a book publisher. But as a bookstore, you have competition, so your SAM changes. So we'll discuss that when we come to SAM. But if you were a software provider for bookstores or a library book or a bookkeeping software solutions provider, you don't have a TAM anymore for that. Fair, understood. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Uh, What is SAM? SAM is expanded as serviceable and available market. It is a segment of TAM that you can actually target. It's usually a subset of TAM that you can reach. It's based on the infrastructure you have, the business strategy you adopted. It's the market you are able to target within the TAM. It it helps you estimate the market that you can acquire. And this is defined by who you're willing to target, who you're going after, and factors like that. And a great way to calculate SAM is by multiplying the number of potential customers by the percentage of the market that you can target. Now, you can target could be geographic means, could be affordability means, it could be by different factors. Okay, it could also be by arriving at some kind of surrogates which will define what kind of people might be willing to try you. Absolutely. Okay, so therefore it is almost a down-weighting to TAM. You down-weight TAM by some measure yeah it it usually is but i again have a point of view on this that 
the SAM of a business does not have to be restricted by TAM because we already touched upon TAM itself being an evolving factor. So if you tie your SAM too closely or too tightly to your TAM, then it kind of restricts your business thinking. Unless you decide to change the time itself every time. Exactly. Okay. So if if you are flexible enough to change your TAM, then yes, SAM will always be a subset. But if you want to expand your business beyond your TAM, you don't have to restrict yourself within that space because there's just a calculation metric for investors and for you to give you projections. So let's say, look at Mama Earth, for example. They started off as a baby product, a baby care company. Now from baby care, they expanded to mothers, then to larger women or personal care. Now they've even gone into men's personal care. Now that is a SAM that's continued to evolve, which is a virtue of the TAM also continuing to evolve. But had the SAM been defined by TAM, then this business thinking would not have happened or may not have happened. Uh, like maybe fairness screens at one point in time, time must have been all women. And then the industry evolved and somebody exploded it. Uh, they saw TAM differently and therefore they saw their SAM differently. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's as good with uh, movies, right? Uh, once Bahubali does 1000 crores, then Tangle does another 1000 crores after that. So the market has just been defined by it and you keep following through saying, I can target more. That, that sounds fair. Okay. And then for Sam, now tell me, you said that it is, it talks about addressable market. That sounds like something which is a function of quite a few things. Function of imagination, function of investment that you have, function of the risk you are willing to take, etc, etc. Is that so? Right. It is. And it's not completely controllable, as in it's not always as easy to identify and frame based on your controllables, in the sense that it requires a deep understanding of the target market and the competitive landscape. A lot of game theory comes into play saying, if they have money, the competition is going to go after so much of a market share, their share of voices so much. So it requires a lot of research to identify the portion of market that is actually interested in your brand and is willing to pay for it. So it's not something saying, I am going to go after A plus households in the metros of India. It's not as simple as that statement. It's about going into a lot more detail to say what does it take to go after these households and who are the people who are already fighting for the share of wallet and then coming down to a reason saying what is my right to justify to win the right portion of this wallet that I'm going to focus on. And that would define your SAM. And it's not always black and white. And it you could come up with this, a different SAM for the same brand and I could come up with a different SAM and we have a logic right. As long as the logic is right and you are the business operator, you're fine. Fair. Yeah, that sounds logical. When we started TAM, you said TAM is not the only uh, sec uh, only metric to look at. Uh, did you mean that one should look at TAM as well as SAM, both? In fact, TAM, people should look at TAM, SAM and SOM together. They want, If they're looking to make uh, an impact on the business or to judge a business, but yeah, looking at TAM and SAM together will give you far greater clarity than just looking at TAM. And again, SAM is not always the most relevant market to target in the sense that, say, there could be opportunities beyond SAM. And that might not be there when you make your projections. There was this fabric fragrancer that I worked on some time back. And it had a better right to win in the pet care segment than it had in the fabric care segment. So the entire business was changed depending on where the brand was going. So those things also happen. You're listening to Cobb, conversations on the business of brands. Your hosts are Sudeep Chawla, marketing practitioner, business leader, and educator to advertising and marketing professionals, and Sharavana Raghavan, of Vitral Brand Expertise, growth consultants to consumer-facing brands and businesses. For more information, go to cobcast.net. If you find this podcast helpful, 
please help us by telling your friends and rating us uh, let us get to the third metric which is som what is som the baby of the three which is your service obtainable market oh okay i always thought it was share of market ha huh. now this share of market is the result okay when you are telling your boss this is the market share i'm going to go after it is a service serviceable obtainable market it is a potential market share okay <laughs> so b- at the beginning of the year it is this sum at the end of the year it is your sum hmm okay understood <laughs> understood okay so serviceable obtainable market yeah that's just fancy name for saying what market share you can get it is the share of the sam that you're going to go after and what are you realistically capable of capturing okay so in addition to investments and strategy it also takes competition spend like i mentioned in sam that and your market realities into consideration what channels am i going after am i going after all potential touch points am i going after the entire or target audience properly within the sam so all of these come into play so for this you would calculate it by multiplying the number of potential customers by the percentage of the market that a brand can real- realistically capture and this becomes a lot more tangible at least sounds a lot lot more tangible when you're making the sum numbers and so let me put it in, a, in an entrepreneur sense right for an investor your sum becomes the most relevant number in the short term the moment you achieve your sum so i'm going to achieve 2% market share and you achieve that 2% market share your investor starts to relax saying okay you're full, starting to fulfill your promises now if you can't reach your sum is when your investor starts going into panic saying he can't even do the sum what's the point of the time your sum is your first measure for an investor in the entrepreneur investor relationship okay so it's supposed to be uh significantly more grounded than the other two yes okay so hence if i am a new brand who is only looking to going to go digital out and hence my som will take that into account that i am not going to be present in offline channel it should yes okay exactly and then suppose in my brand journey in my business journey i become big enough and i realize that now i need to expand and therefore i start looking at for example modern trade formats and right. hence uh, at that stage my som will go up absolutely it will go up manifold okay. because you are increasing adding another channel so okay. in today's parlance you look at d2c brands yeah they are going omni channel yeah significantly alter their som som okay while the time might still be the same yes okay understood but one watch out here on som though is something that's very important popular parlance going on is that som is not always a reliable indicator of business performance because it does not take into account your profitability you as a new brand as a startup brand could have achieved your som could have achieved a significant share of your sam say you've taken 50% of your sam and you might not not have taken your profitability into consideration at all because you do have say you are selling on the marketplaces and your sam itself is a little restrictive and you've gotten 50% of sam now you spent a lot of money to get that now is that proof of good business that's for anybody to judge and that's what the market eventually does when you list it so a som is the first gate for an investor to judge a business and the entrepreneur not necessarily the most credible health indicator of a business that's a caveat i'd put on the table okay fair so now when you are grounding som so much how is this different from market share because here this is what your business plans indicate saying what market share you can get at the beginning of the year now at the end of the year let's say you at the beginning of the year you put your market plans your sales plans your business strategy all to acquire 2% of the market that's the som at the end of the year if you've done 1.5% of the market or you got 3% of the market that is your actual share of market this is obtainable which is set in the future it's 
it's future very tense when it's being listed fair so it's the promise of a market share which might or might not get delivered and market share tells you what you have actually delivered yes and this is what your business plans are gauged and therefore you were saying that one should look at tam sam som all all of them right. in consonance to possibly hmm. try and judge a business right hmm. and why did you say so just say give us a little bit of more clarity around that because see what does tam tell you tam tells you the global picture or the the large the large scale picture uh huh now the large scale picture doesn't tell you take comp- does not take competition into account it does not tell you when you're going to be very large it only tells you there's a large customer base you can go after yeah now who are you running with what are you capable of doing there nobody knows and then when you, when you add sam to it it then tells you the kind of slices the market to say okay for this brand in this business your sam kind of tapers down to a smaller portion of the tam therefore this is what we should be talking about then the moment you add som your your actual business capabilities to it then it narrows down even further say in the short term this is my potential business size and that is using all the three layers is a, a lot more saying as an investor i am investing today in the short term how big the business is going to be in the medium term how big the business is going to be and in the long term potentially how big can the business get is the way an investor or an entrepreneur should look at the business so therefore using all the three filters gives you a more holistic picture i'm reminded of another example i was watching this uh, video podcast called barber shop and uh, he was hosting uh, mr mahapatra he is the founder of this company called off business they work in the commodities market and they do credit financing there trade financing there and they deal in all kind of gases and metals and all of that so shant i think you mentioned this it's a very unglamorous yeah, category yeah so that shant asked him why did you choose this so this guy said almost something to what you were earlier saying that this is such an unglamorous business i knew not many people will be looking at it and hence therefore i had the opportunity to you know really go and be a big player there now if i were to be thinking on his behalf he would have seen that the time is decently big Hmm. maybe not as big as say uh, a cosmetic brand but it decently big but the chance of som is possibly very high som uh, the ratio of som to tam possibly is very high in this business because one he is the first mover and number hmm. two there aren't many competitors any which ways and aren't going to be also because the sector is very unglamorous technical boring etc right yeah yeah boring is the word yeah. yes you're right and therefore you know that also might prompt some of the investors to look at that that uh, hmm. the distance between som and tam might not be very big for slightly niche but highly profitable businesses exactly while for some of the businesses the distance between som and tam might be very very big uh, depending on how big the tam is and how competitively intensive each one of those uh, sectors are Oh, absolutely. Fair. But Sudeep, I'm going to get you to do some maths, which I'm not very good at. Okay. For the example, I want you to work off the Tam, Sam, and Som for your very famous healthy chocolate. <laughs> We're still on the healthy chocolate after thirty-five, thirty-six episodes. I can't get over that. Okay. excellent so let's do that okay cool so when we were talking about healthy chocolate i'll keep the positioning etc aside total addressable market so who all will possibly eat healthy chocolate and we were at that time thinking of healthy chocolate as a snack yeah it is something that you can eat any time and not just restricted to only meetha occasions etc so from a time perspective i will possibly want to look at snacking occasions and i would say that uh, Uh, out of the entire india population so about uh, 140 crore of population roughly about uh, 40 45 crore households yeah let's just remove the bottom 20% households where possibly there is a uh, bpl or they are right now at a sustenance level and hence the concept of snacking might not be significantly relevant 
so we are left with about 80 percent of 45 crores so therefore about 36 crores uh, uh, you know 36 crore household yeah or maybe for ease of calculation let's take it as 30 crore households so 30 crore household is your potentially addressable market yeah you start from there now you said that multiplied by number of occasions now i take one one snacking occasion a day snack once a day which is somewhere possibly in the evening somewhere between four and six let's take that as one occasion and uh, for some people in the household for example the men of the house or the or the youngsters etc they might not be snacking at that point in time but they'll be snacking slightly late but one snacking occasion in the house so 30 crore into once a day which means 30 occasions a month so 30 crore into 30 for a monthly calculation into per snacking occasion uh, you know if you take about three to four people per household they might end up spending a minimum of about 20 20 25 rupees per day okay. on snacking let's say let's say 20 rupees, 20 rupees per, day. per day for snacking so 30 hmm. into 30 into 20 so roughly about 900 into 20 18000 so 18000 crores yes so about 18000 crores would be your tam for snacking right. if you think of yourself right. as a snacking option so 18000 crore per month hmm. could be your tam perfect and this is where you're talking about an indian brand you're not looking at a national level that's clear on the tam point national ha huh? all india perfect yeah Makes sense. So, so your TAM is 18,000 crores for the healthy child. Per month, yes. Now, Perfect. you start going to SAM. Now, uh, from my previous experience in a little bit of what I know about snacking, etc. Uh, one of the key concepts in India that works is Garam Nashta, Thanda Nashta. Right? So, hot snacks and cold snacks. And India considers hot snacks as better because they are considered fresh homemade etc etc so therefore you know about 60% uh, of your snacking occasions yeah uh, or the 60% of the snacking market would possibly go with that and you, you are left with only 40% yeah now 40% is out of 18,000 crores 40% 40, 40 is 7,200 crores yeah now 40% market is your cold snacks yeah. Yeah. 60 is hot, 40 is cold. Ha, 40 is Fair. cold. So, therefore, 7,200 crore becomes your cold snack market. I think within cold snack, you need to think about savory and sweet. Because finally, you are a chocolate, so you will be sweet. So, I think a filter of savory and sweet needs to be used. What I know from my previous experience in this category is that snacking, a significant part of the snacking is savory. Because savory gives rise to uh, moorishness. You tend to eat more. You want to eat more. You tend to munch more. Right. Like, so you continue to munch. When it's salty, you end up munching more. Correct. Like so popcorn. like it happens with popcorn or namkeen or stuff like that. Whereas you don't do that uh, with uh, something that is sweet because sweet is satiating. So beyond a point, you will not be able to eat more than two, three pieces of sweet. While you might actually gobble up the entire bowl of uh, savory snacks yeah so therefore uh, my best guess will be so about 70 uh, percent 80 percent of the of the market again would go to savory and we are left left with about 20 30 percent of the market for sweet snacks yeah so we were left with uh, 7200 crores so if 70 percent of that goes so you have roughly about uh 30% left, which is about 2000 crores. Yeah, so now you are, you are uh, Sam then possibly is 2000 crores of 2000 crore of monthly sweet snacking market. Right, this includes branded, unbranded, everything. Everything. This includes right. lots so of stuff. Sam, you wanted to find. Yeah, okay. so it would possibly include branded, unbranded sweets as in Mithai. Then sweet biscuits, all sorts of them, glucose, cookies, and chocolate biscuit, etc., etc. It would incl include ice creams and it would include chocolates. 
या फिर बिग कैटेगरीज देर सो योर सैम देर फॉर बिकम्स टू थाउजेंड करोर्स पर मंथ नाउ यू कम टू सॉम राइट नाउ इन सॉम यू वुड देन से दैट ओके हाउ एम आई गोइंग टू डिफाइन माई कॉम्पिटिशन एंड दोजिशनिंग या एंड द पोजिशनिंग एंड द कॉम्पिटिशन इज डिफाइंड बाई द पोजिशनिंग सो इफ आई से to the consumer that don't eat chocolates eat me then my competition is chocolates hmm. if i tell them don't eat sweets eat me then my competition is sweets so it depends on how i am approaching the market suppose i approach the market as ch- chocolates for example how you want to define your marketing objective yes comes back to that yeah perfect so now uh, within that 2000 crore You have four big categories. Uh, you have biscuits, you have ice creams, you have chocolates, and you have uh, mitai. Mitai, yeah. So out of these four, my hunch is that biscuits will be the biggest. Right. It'll be about forty percent of the market. Right. Yeah. And then there'll be possibly mitai, which will be another maybe twenty-five, thirty percent. Yeah. Right. And then there'll be uh, chocolates, which is another ten to fifteen percent. So that makes it forty, thirty-five, seventy-five, seventy-five, and fifteen, ninety, uh, and ten percent will be ice cream, roughly. Right. So, if chocolate is fifteen percent, so fifteen percent of two thousand crores is about three hundred crores. Hmm. So, if you are defining chocolate as your market, so your som, ideally, should come out of chocolate, which is about three uh, hundred crores yeah. per month. Within that, you might want to say that. Uh, some bit of it will be for indulgent yeah but yeah. and but from my marketing point of view from my spend point of view because i'm taking on the entire chocolate industry you mm-hmm. might say that my against when i'm fighting with the likes of cadbury or nestle or hershey's etc etc i will at best be able to invest sufficient money to create a 30% share of voice for me in the next entire year and okay. 30% share of voice might give me for example uh, a 10% at best a 10% market share ambitious but yes yeah. <laughs> so so therefore uh, hence in a 300 crore of uh, chocolate market per right. month i will get about 10% som which is about 30 crore per month Right. So that's how I whittled down from eighteen thousand crore per month of TAM to about thirty crore of right. SOM. Right. Yeah, per month. Now, if you apply your your trade to this, your positioning of four women to this, it'll further it'll further come down. But to avoid complexity, yes, I think this is a good place to stop because this very clearly says how you break things down from. a tam to a sam to a som yeah and these are all again indicative numbers you know i yeah. might have gone somewhere uh, wrong here and there but the idea is to just possibly tell uh, as to how to look at surrogates to cut a particular market and then how to put keep putting filters so that you are able to arrive at an answer that seems logical to you exactly yeah so does that pass your approval sharan I was just happy you took away the number pressure from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure uh, a lot of our uh, business friends, startup friends, would have met some consultants. They are very good at crunching numbers, so they will, at the flick of their wrist, will be able to produce the Tam Sam Som for you. At least on the Excel sheet, they can, as long as right. you guide them with some of the specificities of the business, which is uh, about what kind of market are you going after. what do you know right. about them about their consumption occasions throughput per occasions etc and then from a som perspective what do you think we will be able to target and all of that right uh, and i also hope we've managed to bust a few myths about uh, these three factors because a lot sometimes i've met entrepreneurs who are intimidated by these numbers uh-huh. by the tam sam and som and i also met entrepreneurs who use it wrong sure. and make a few fatal mistakes so So I I hope we managed to clarify that today. Yeah, I hope so. I think uh, this is a good one, uh, and I I think the way you put uh, definitions of Tam Sam Som makes it fairly clear, uh, and also makes it amply clear that one should not be using each one of these metric individually, 
it is best to look at them in a combined manner when you are evaluating as uh, the business or a business opportunity uh, from a investor point of view as well as from a entrepreneur point of view right okay excellent thank you for this sharan thank you for listening to cob conversations on the business of brands with sudeep chawla and sharavana raghavan subscribe and learn more at cobcast.net that's c o b b c a s t .net Thank you.